One aspect that I don't particularly like about web design is designing forms. It's a tedious process, can be super frustrating, and overall, it's just not something that I like to do. Styling a form always felt like it took forever. That is until I started using Elementor Pro. One of my favorite things about Elementor Pro is the forms widget because it makes designing forms a lot easier. With so many features already available in the box, I no longer have to install plugins, extensions, or add pages of CSS code to get my form to work the way that I want it to. In today's video, I'm going to go over all of the features of Elementor Pro's form widget. Let's get started. I've opened up this page in Elementor and dragged over a form widget. By default, your form will display name, email, and message, along with a submit button. The first thing that you'll want to do is give your form a name. Since this is going on a page to make reservations for a restaurant, I'm going to call it reservations. I can easily add, remove, and switch the order that the form field displays. To add an item, I'll hit the add item button. Under type, I have a list of all the different fields I can add. Different options will show depending on the type of field that you add, so fill out your options accordingly. You also have the ability to make your field required. If toggled on, the user won't be able to submit the form unless the field is filled out. To remove a field, click the X. To change the order of fields, drag and drop to the correct position. Elementor also gives you the ability to style forms in columns using the column width option. Let's go deeper into some of the specific types of fields that you can add. Towards the bottom of the list, you'll see fields for reCAPTCHA. Selecting this option adds a Google reCAPTCHA to your form to help with spam. This requires you to set up a Google reCAPTCHA account and to add a key in the Elementor settings. We have a video that walks you through the process step by step, and I can leave that in the description below. A honeypot is another tool used to help with form spam. Adding this to your form doesn't require an account with Google or any other setup. Although helpful, both the honeypot and Google reCAPTCHA won't prevent all spam, so don't be surprised if you still see spam messages come through. Lastly, let's talk about the field called Step. Elementor makes it really easy to create a multi-step form, which is a great option if you have a really long form where you need to capture a lot of fields. If you add a step field, your form will be broken up into different pages. Whatever is above the step field will be shown on page one, and whatever is below it will show on page two. If I'm designing a multi-step form, I usually will add in all of my form fields, then add the steps in at the end. I like to be able to see all of the fields inside the editor, and when you add the step field, you start to see that some of those fields below it go away. You have the option to change the input size with this dropdown. This is for styling. You can go from extra small to extra large. You also have the ability to show or hide your form labels and show a mark on the form if something is required. Note that if you hide the label, you won't be able to show the required mark. Under the buttons tab, we have options for the submit button and the next and previous buttons. You can change the size, column width, button text, and add an icon to the button if you want. You also have the option to add an ID if you need to add some custom CSS to these buttons. Actions after submit is next. This is what your form will do once someone hits that submit button. When you add actions, the settings will show below. By default, collect submissions and email are on this form. Collect submissions collects the information of the form in the database. This is an Elementor setting you'll need to turn on if you want that. I love this feature because it works as a backup, so I do recommend turning this on. You have the ability to export this data into a CSV file, which could be helpful if you're trying to build an email list or need to send a client information. So overall, this is a really good feature. When you have email selected as an action, this means the form data will be emailed. You can add the email you want the data to go to under the email settings. Email 2 will send an auto-response email after the user hits submit. So for example, on our site, we have it when somebody fills out the contact form, the email 2 will get sent out saying thank you for contacting us and we'll be in touch soon. 
This is going to be a plain text email, so nothing that looks fancy. If you know HTML, you can add it to the message to format it a little bit, but don't expect it to look like something that you would see from a CRM like MailChimp. Redirect will take users to another page after they submit. This works well if you want to create a thank you page or take users to a page where they can download something. If you add this action, you'll need to add the link to the page that you want to redirect to. Next up are a bunch of different services that you can tie your Elementor form to. If you use one of these services, you can add API keys in the Elementor settings. This is a great marketing feature and I add it to a lot of our clients' websites that are looking to grow their email list. Instead of embedding an ugly form that the CRM provides or having to install another plugin, I can do this right through Elementor settings without having to install anything. The settings you add will be dependent on what service you're using, but just follow the instructions and do some tests to make sure it's working right. The last two actions are webhook and pop-up. If you're using a service that's not built into Elementor, you do have the option to do a webhook to tie into your form. How you do that will depend on what service you're using, but most companies will give you detailed instructions. The pop-up action is to open or close an Elementor pop-up window. If you have this on, you'll need to have a pop-up already created in Elementor. Then you can add the name of it here. Under step settings, these are the settings for your multi-step form. If you're not making a multi-step form, you won't need to worry about this, but this changes those icons at the top of the form. Under additional options, you have settings for form ID and form validation. I usually don't need to mess with either of these, but obviously this will be dependent on how your form works. I do like to toggle on custom messages to change what the messages say after a user submits. If you keep this checked off, it will display the default messages that you see here. Just like every Elementor widget, you have the three tabs at the top for content, style, and advanced. We are just under the content tab. If we go to the style tab, you'll get all the options for styling the form. These controls give you the ability to style every aspect of your form. Under the advanced tab, you have some more styling options along with some motion effects, responsive controls, and the ability to add custom CSS if needed. The form widget in Elementor Pro has a lot of features built into it, eliminating the need to add any additional plugins. When you take advantage of all of the features available, it can be a powerful tool for marketing and automation. If you found this video helpful, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and check out our other Elementor Pro tutorials. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.